with you a little bit of the information that I have about the NDIS assistive technology um, strategy and what that means for you in helping your clients to get the assistive technology that they need to be able to help them meet their needs. So I'm going to talk today about the current assistive technology um, procedure and policies. Um, this, the NDIS has said that this is going to be changing in the future and they have some trials going ahead. But regardless of that, you have clients right now that you need to see and support. So I thought I'd fill you in on what the processes is at the moment so that um, you can get in and help your client. The current NDIS assistive technology policy is a, both a risk-based and a cost-based process. So for pieces of equipment uh, that are considered to be low risk and low cost, um, this is their level one uh, strategy. They have uh, four levels um, and you can have a look at the AT complexity levels on the NDIS website. Uh, participants can go out and purchase them on their own. They generally have some funding available in their core budget um, and if they're self-managing this is really easy for them to be able to go out buy the equipment off the shelf, uh, usually it doesn't require any uh, modifications or very much training other than what the salesperson can do and um, they're right to go. If they are not self-managing that part of their budget, the core budget and the consumables budget, then it's a little bit tricky because they need to find a, um, a provider registered in that category who sells that equipment which makes it a little bit more challenging for people to be able to get the equipment that they need. The second category is level two. And again, this is for relatively low, maybe slightly higher cost, but still relatively low cost, uh, simple equipment that uh, may need a little bit more training, but may not need an allied health professional to do that training, but they may. It really it's, depends on the person's um, individual needs and their complexity and their understanding of their equipment, whether they've used that equipment before. Uh, again, they can purchase that from their consumables budget and then uh, it depends on whether, they're, again, they're self-managing or not, how easy that is for them to spend it at the moment. The levels three and four, and I think these are the ones that are most critical for um, allied health professionals because these require allied health professionals to be involved in the assessment and support uh, for the person and they generally require a report and quote to go to the NDIS so that they can purchase it. It tends to be equipment that's either more expensive or more complex or the client's needs are more complex in order to be able to get the right equipment. The funding for this tends to go into the capital budget um, and that's allocated towards purchasing larger pieces of equipment. In level three are the and four, um, it's this, the process is the same for both, although the complexity of equipment might, um, might vary, uh, is that uh, the person, uh, you need to trial some equipment usually, um, or at least consider a range of equipment, including um, mainstream and specialized equipment. You need to consider uh, whether the uh, it's reasonable and necessary for the NDIS, first of all, to be funding this equipment. It's not better funded from a different um, funding body, such as education or health in particular. And um, it needs to meet the person's goals as well. Um, you now, as health professionals, I know that we all do that. Um, so, the process from there is once you have trialled one or two or more pieces of equipment and you've determined what is um, best for that person, you write your report, and I'll speak a bit about what to put in the report in um, one of my next videos. And then that gets submitted via email at this stage, back to the NDIS, um, to the inquiries line, and then the planner can have a look at it. This usually triggers a plan review, uh, so it can take a little bit of time because we know that plan reviews take some time at the moment, and the planner then has a look at it. Now, if the planner can tell from the report whether or not it is reasonable and necessary for the NDIS to fund it, they can then fund it straight away. However, if the planner can't tell, which is quite often because uh, the pieces of equipment we're funding are quite complex and we, in order to um, write our report, we need to use some um, complex terms and complex reasoning, then the planner isn't always uh, skilled in being able to decipher those. And so it goes to another team who then 
review the the report and then decide to approve or not approve based on their understanding of reasonable and necessary and the information that you have provided in your report. The NDIS has acknowledged that there are a lot of, um, that this is a really lengthy process and it's unnecessarily so, uh, but at, at the moment it does take a bit of time for um, that team to review the vast number of um, reports that they need to review and then to give approval and therefore the funding for the person to be able to purchase the equipment once it's been approved. So that's the current process. I'll talk in my next video um, a bit about what you can put in your reports to support clients needing those level three and four complex equipment to be able to help them to be able to get the right equipment. And next I'll also talk about some of the proposed changes the NDIS is planning and trialing so you can um, know about what might be coming up in the future. I'd love to hear from you guys though. Um, let me know if you are uh, prescribing equipment or recommending equipment. Um, if you are having success with writing your reports, if you've got any tips, share them here as well. People need to know um, what's working and what's not. And uh, if you're completely confused by the, the whole process, uh, let me know. And let me know if you're not, if it's working for you and you've got a process um, that is helping your clients get the equipment they need to achieve their outcomes. Put it in the comments. This is part of a community building and uh, sharing for um, everybody, so uh, your comments can help other people to get the information they need to be able to support their clients. Look forward to joining you in the in the conversation, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.